Problem set four. <clears throat> if you've already done problem set four, well, here's a chance to review it. And when I get to a problem, put the, put the video on pause and try to do it yourself and see if you can get the correct answer. The correct answers is only a, are only a couple seconds away from where you left off. So have some paper, pencil uh, with you. And uh, if you want to do well on the quizzes, this is uh, what you should know. Gunther, the weightlifter, can lift 223 kilogram barbell overhead on Earth. The acceleration due to gravity on the sun is 274 meters per second squared. Would the barbells be heavier on Earth or the sun? How much in newtons would the barbells weigh on the sun if it were possible to stand on the sun without melting? And extra credit if you tell me how much they weigh on Earth. Well, A, they would be heavier on the sun because force is mass times acceleration. The, the acceleration is 274, not 10 times whatever mass the barbells are. In this case, they're 273 kilograms. So the barbells would certainly weigh heavier on the sun. If it were Mars... How much would they weigh? That's extra credit as well. So they would weigh, they would weigh 6.34 times 10 to the fourth newtons. That's 63,000. I weigh, my weight, Mr. Darcy's weight is about 1,000 newtons. So can he lift 63 of me? I don't think so. So that would be an impossibility. <clears throat> Red Sox designated hitter David Ortiz, he's called Big Poppy. He swings at point he swings at a 0.15 kilogram baseball and accelerates it at a rate of 3 times 10 to the 4th meters per second squared. How much force does he exert on the baseball? So, the force would be F equals MA. I, I went to a Red Sox game shortly before I came here, and uh, Big Poppy hit a home run a few rows uh, away from me in the stands. Uh, and it was uh, quite, quite thrilling. I was in the bleachers in the uh, left field. So, force equals MA. So, this problem is actually fairly simple and that is that you're simply going to take the mass of the baseball which is 0.15 kilograms and multiply it by the acceleration uh, and uh, he's going to deliver on the baseball uh, 4500 newtons now is it negative or positive? That's the question. Claudia stubs her toe on the coffee table with a force of 100 newtons. What is the acceleration of Claudia's 1.8 kilogram foot? What is the acceleration of the table? It has a mass of 20 kilograms. Why would Claudia's toe hurt less if the table had less mass? Very interesting. Well, the answer to A, what is the acceleration of Claudia's 1.8 kilogram foot, is going to be the, uh, the force divided by the mass of the foot. So that's going to be negative 55.6 meters per second squared. That's negative 55.6 meters per second squared. Now remember, these are the book signs. So what are going what are the signs going to be for our class? Remember the initial I said the initial um, motion is in the is in the direction, but Claudia's toe, Claudia's foot is decelerating. And then what is the acceleration of the table? It's only going to be five meters per second squared. So it's going to be considerably less than Claudia's foot 
because the mass is considerably more. Why would Claudius' toe hurt less if the table had less mass? The table moves away easily if it had less mass, so the force on Claudius' foot will be less. Okay, so less acceleration. And what does that mean, greater acceleration? So a very, very good problem to get you thinking about. Even though it's a very simple problem, it's also very complex. While chopping down his father's cherry tree, George discovered that it, if he swung the axe with a speed of 25 meters per second, it would embed itself 2.3 centimeters into the tree before coming to a stop. If the axe head had, had a mass of 2.5 kilograms, how much force was the tree exerting on the axe head upon impact? How much force did the axe exert back on the tree? So very interesting. So this is the equation you're going to be using because if you look at the problem, you're looking at velocity, acceleration, and distance. And this is the equation that relates all three. So the uh, all you have to do is look and see what we are actually relating. And this would be the equation you would choose. Remember, there's only three equations to choose from. And so this would be the one. So you're going to rearrange this equation for acceleration. Can you do that? Do you see that the acceleration equals final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared divided by 2d. Now, the Americans who see this will obviously remember the, the, uh, the story about George Washington chopping down his father's cherry tree. Uh, but it's a little bit tough to describe this to someone else uh, from another country. You're going to plug in 0 minus 25 squared. Now, notice that that's going to be not positive 625, 25 squared is 625, but it's going to be negative. So that square is just squaring the, um, the 25. So then you solve for A, and you'll find that A equals negative 13,587 meters per second squared. So why is that acceleration negative? Well, that acceleration is negative because the axe is coming to a stop. Now, remember, the 25 meters per second is the velocity, not he starts to swing at, he starts to swing at zero meters per second. But just before he hits that tree, it's going 25 meters per second. Now, it has a mass of 2.5 kilograms, and that's the acceleration. <clears throat> So the force is going to be F equals MA. So you're given the mass, 2.5 kilograms. You're given the acceleration, negative 13,587 meters per second squared. So then it's just simply going to be a question of putting in MA. And then now you're going to simply put in your calculator, 2.5 times 13,587. Now, let the signs, let the signs, um, let the signs help you with the forces, okay? So the force here is going to be a negative force because it, it is uh, decelerating, okay? And so the force is going to be negative 34,000 newtons. So that's a, you know, that's a pretty, that's a pretty big, that's a pretty big uh, force. You know, if you're, if you're new to physics, you, you're not sure what Newtons mean. So just think of a thousand Newtons is the, is the weight of a large man, uh, at least. I'm, I'm large and I'm a thousand Newtons. So just think of you know, 34 times a, th a large man. So that's a large force. And the axe exerted 34,000 newtons on the tree. Therefore, the tree exerted 34,000 newtons on the axe. Okay, so, um, you know, the, 
the tree decelerated the axe. Carter's favorite ride at the amusement park is the roller coaster. The roller coaster's car and passengers have a combined mass of 1620 kilograms. 1620, what's the significance of that in American history? 1620, extra credit. And descend the first hill at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. What is the force? What, with what force is the roller coaster pulled down the hill? Let's take a few minutes and look at forces in, in two dimensions. Okay, forces in two dimensions. And then we'll take a break and you'll never know I was away. Well, <clears throat> you have, we're assuming, you know, the FP is going to be the direction of the motion because that's the pulling down or that natural tendency to go down. You could be pulling it up the ramp and then FP would be on the other side. So if FP is on the other side, by, by default, the force of friction would be opposite FP. Okay, so you have FW, you have FN, you have FP. Now we have the equations. FN is FW cosine theta. Where's theta? I maybe forgot to put that in. Theta is uh, the angle with the horizontal. And that's also the same as an angle between the orange and... Uh, yellow lines up near the center of the box and then fp is fw sine theta and then the force of friction uh, static would be less than the uh, would be less than mu static fn and force of friction kinetic would equal would equal um, mu kinetic fn and then fw equals mg f net is just ma now i should have had that equation after the next one but fp minus ff is going to be the for, uh, net force and then sine theta equals fp over fw and then cosine theta equals fn over fw so there you have that those are the equations uh, why, what is the mu static? Okay, what is that? What, that's, well, did you ever, like, um, you know, you have like a box on the ground, you know, and the force needed to kind of like overcome that little bit of inertia, you know, it's kind of like just an activation push to get it going. Well, the, you know, the, the, static the mu static is going to be a little higher and then once you get that going then the mu kinetic is a little bit easier but that mu static you got to kind of give it a little push to overcome that mu static so that's why that is a there's a difference there that's a little bit of a difference okay so so uh, there is a difference between mu static and mu kinetic and we'll work on that when we do our labs for this unit <clears throat> and uh, so I'll take a break and you'll never know I was gone okay to reread this uh, from before we were reviewing the force into dimensions and the triangle and all the equations Carter's favorite ride at the amusement park is a roller coaster the roller coaster car and passengers have a combined mass of 1620 kilograms and they send the descend the first hill at 45 degrees to the horizontal what is the force of the roller coaster pulled down the hill? Okay, so just FP equals FW sine theta or simply MG sine theta and 1620 times 10 times sine 45 is going to be approximately uh, 11,500, exactly 11,500 newtons. So, the FP, which is the, that portion of the weight parallel to the ramp, is going to be 11,500 newtons. Area equals length times width. 
Brooke comes home from school and puts her books on the table, kitchen table, and grabs a snack. The books have a combined weight of 25 newtons, and it, uh, the books are in uh, 0.19 by 0.24. What pressure do they apply? So we're going to do the area first. 0 .9, 0 0.19 times 0.24 is 0 0.046. Put that into the given. And then we know that uh, 1 Pascal is 1 Newton per meter squared. And then we know that pressure is going to equal uh, force divided by area. And we're going to want to solve for the pressure. So it's going to be the force, 25 Newtons, divided by 0 0.046 meters squared. And that's going to be approximately 500-ish uh, probably a little more than 500 newtons or 500 pascals so that's what I'm guessing because it was 0 0.05 meters per second squared it would be 500 so if it was 0 0.05 meters squared it would be 500 so 540 sounds about right so it would be 540 newtons per meter squared or 540 pascals <coughs> so that's the answer to that one. Now, uh, uh, a one that's a little bit more involved, a coffee cup mug, a coffee mug, a full coffee mug has a mass of 0.6 kilograms and an empty mug has a mass of 0.3 kilograms. Which mug, the full one or the empty one, applies a greater pressure on the table if the full mug applies a pressure of 12 100 newtons per meter squared what is the area inside a circular ring of coffee left on the table by the bottom of the mug what is the radius of the coffee ring the full mug applies more pressure because a larger force is spread over a given area so i did a for you now what's b uh, b is going to be six newtons mg so the force is 6 newtons. Uh, that's my washing machine in the background. I don't know if you can hear that. And so, uh, so we know that pressure equals Fw over A. And uh, then you're going to plug in those values and come up with the appropriate answer. Be right back. Now you want to rearrange and solve for A. We know that... The A will equal FW over P. So we're solving for A. A equals FW over P. Plugging into the equation, we have 6 Newtons divided by 1,200 Pascals. Remember, a Newton meter squared per meter squared is going to be 1 Pascal. So that's 1,200 Pascals. The area is 0 0.005 meters squared. And so it's going to be, then when we find the radius, we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. So uh, we know that uh, the area equals 0 0.005 meters and the uh, radius squared, the area equals pi r squared, r squared equals a over pi. Now, if you take the square root of both sides, you'll get radius equals area over pi. And then you're going to plug in the values, and you'll get, wait it for it, you'll get 0 0.005 meters squared over pi. Take the square root of that. And so the radius is going to be equal to the square root of the quotient or 0 0.04 meters. And that makes sense. So it'll be about four centimeters inside that little circle, which is about right. It's about right. It's going to be smaller than the rim of the top rim. Okay, Caleb is filling up water balloons for the Physics Olympics Balloon Toss Competition.
Caleb sets a 0.5 kilogram spherical balloon on the kitchen table and notices that the bottom of the balloon flattens until the pressure at the bottom is reduced to 630 newtons per meter squared. What is the area of the flat bottom spot? The flat spot on the bottom of the balloon. Okay, what is the area? Now it says it's going to be spherical. Okay, so we know that pressure is F over A which reduces to A equals F over P and we know that F equals MA and so we know that the pressure is going to be 0.5 times 10 divided by 630. So we want to plug that in and then solve for A. And then we're probably going to be solving for the radius. And we know that A equals pi r squared. There's the area. We know that r equals root A over pi. Solve for r. Plug in A, which we have there, 0 0.00794 meters squared. Pi is in your calculator. And so, oh, there it is. What is the radius of the flat spot? So I'm going to let you finish this. I'm going to be quiet. And I'm just going to let this run and see if you can come up with the answer before it is shown on the computer. There it is. Very exciting. Very, very little exciting. As exciting as this physics. I can tell you, I am just so excited. Uh, okay, so that's the, the radius, 0 0.05. Five centimeters, not that much. A mm, couple inches. So let's do some terms. Static friction, which we talked about before a little bit. The resistance force that must be overcome to start an object in motion is a little higher. A little higher than the kinetic friction, uh, which is, uh, or sliding friction, which is a little bit lower because you, once you get it going, you're, you know, you, you don't have to overcome that little bit of inertia. That's the resistance force between two surfaces already in motion. And then we have the rolling friction, cars, wheels, barrels, anything that rolls. Uh, and then we have uh, that's sorry the the resistance force between a surface and a rolling object the next one's going to be very important when we talk about chapters uh, on fluid dynamics the fluid friction would be the the resistance force of a gas or liquid of, as an object passes through it you know what is the piping made of uh, sandpaper or some pvc or glass or whatever the case may be Okay, the force of sliding friction between two surfaces depends on the normal force pressing the surfaces together and on the types of surfaces, like what they're made of, that are in contact with each other. The magnitude of this force is always written as, wait for it, I gave myself, you know, if I was reading a, a paragraph or something, I usually gave myself a little more time, so 
Uh, be patient with that. Gives you some time to think about it. Force of friction equals the coefficient of sliding friction. The force of sliding friction equals the coefficient of sliding friction times the normal force, which is good. That's a good one. And, uh, and that's going to be uh, FF equals mu FN. And that's something that should be fairly familiar to you already. If an object is sitting on a horizontal surface, the normal force is equal to the weight of the object. The symbol mu, pronounced mu, is called the coefficient of sliding friction. A high coefficient of friction, in other words, a large number from mu, means that the object is not likely to slide easily, while a low coefficient of friction, or small mu, is found between very slippery surfaces. Because the coefficient of sliding friction is simply a ratio of the force of sliding friction to the normal force, it has no units. Now that's dimensional analysis, finding out what's going to actually happen with those units and the fact that they cancel out and something has units, something doesn't have units. The fact that a Newton is kilogram meters per second squared, that's also very important. Uh, so we'll talk about analysis of units uh, as we go through physics. Now, this is an example. Well, this is, this is the, these are the uh, giant um, uh, free body diagram of anything affected by FF, FP, FN, and FW. You see that FP is to the right. So what we're going to say is the motion is going to be to the right. You can see that be, apparently FF and FP are, in, are equal and opposite. So we'll say that it's a constant velocity to the right. Or it could be stopped for all we know. But anyway, uh, FW is down, FN is up. Fn is negative, Fw is positive, Ff is negative, Fp is positive. So I'm going to let you study these uh, for a minute. You'll never know I was gone and uh, see what you can come up with this. Remember this, imprint this on your brain and you will have an easier time. Looks very easy, but it could become fairly confusing when you talk about higher order uh, critical analysis of motion. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break. You'll never know I was gone. Never know I was gone. And uh, come back and we'll start uh, another problem. Okay, be back in a minute. Brian is walking through the school cafeteria but does not realize that the person in front of him has just spilled his glass of chocolate milk. As Brian, who weighs 420 newtons, steps in the milk, the coefficient of sliding friction between Brian in the floor is suddenly reduced to 0 0.04. What is the force of sliding friction between Brian and the slippery, fl slippery floor? The solution, uh, I'll just give you a couple hints here before we actually begin it. In order to find the force of sliding friction, you need to know the normal force, which is the weight at horizontal surface, or the force the ground exerts upward on Brian. On a horizontal surface, the normal force is equivalent to the object's weight, which is what I just said, which in this case is 420 newtons. So let's see if you can solve this. Uh, just a, a quick note. Remember I said that anything less than 0.1 is going to be slippery for the average coordinated person. Uh, people my age who are not particularly coordinated, it's going to be a little bit higher. Uh, something that would not be so slippery for you might be slippery for me or someone else. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what's going on. So we know what Fn is. Fn is 420 newtons. Uh, the coefficient of friction is 0.04 newtons. We know that 
mu is a quotient of ff over fn. We don't know what ff is. We want to solve for that. So ff is going to equal mu fn. So the equation that we're going to use is simply going to be ff equals mu fn. And then we're going to plug in for mu, which is 0 0.04, and plug in for fn, which is 420 newtons. And there's the equation, ff equals mu fn. And then we're going to plug in the values for that, and we'll come up with 17, 17 newtons. Okay, 17 newtons. Now, the next problem will be, while redecorating her apartment, Kitty slowly pushes an 82-kilogram china cabinet across the wooden dining room floor, which resists the motion with the force of friction of 320 newtons. What is the coefficient of sliding friction between the china cabinet and the floor? Let's review just for a moment uh, that picture with a box moving horizontally across a floor or horizontal surface. And we see that FF is to the left, FP is to the right, motion is to the right, FN is up, FW is down. So what is it that we want to do? Let's go back to the original problem. We want to find the coefficient of sliding friction. We know that M is 82, G is 10. We, we don't know what the weight is, but we know, uh, we know that FW is MG. We do know what the weight is. It's going to be 820 newtons, but we're pretending we don't know that we're using equations to solve for our variables. <clears throat> so uh, FW is going to be 820 uh, newtons. I'm kind of making this a little bit crazy. So why don't you see if you can solve this before we come up with the right answer, okay? We know that FW is going to be 820. That's easy. But now what do we do? Now what do we do? See if you can solve for it. I'll be quiet. And it's still playing. Remember FW equals FN because it's horizontal. Okay, so there's there's some more givens. That's the next part of the problem. Some more givens. And let's see. So it's going to be 320 divided by 820. And that's going to be mu. Okay? See if you can get that. So mu is going to be 0.4, which is pretty pretty high so it's not going to be that slippery so it's not going to be that slippery so we have at the zoo a 90 kilogram polar bear slides down a wet slide inclined at an angle of 25 degrees to the horizontal the coefficient of friction between the bear and the slide is 0 0.05 what frictional force impedes the bear's motion down the slide. Let's just review uh, a little bit the equations we're going to be using. Obviously, the FP is going to be the bear sliding down. The friction is going to be based on uh, 0 0.05, 0, 0, coefficient of friction. Uh, and what's going to be the frictional force? So we have to calculate Fn we have to calculate Fn and come up with a uh, value. Uh, so we want to, We know that the bear has a has a, uh, a weight of nine thousand newtons. So now we're going to calculate the uh, we're going to calculate Fn and Ff. And so we're going to plug in for theta will be 25 degrees. So it'll be 9,000 uh, cosine 25 degrees, which is 8,157. So it'll be 0 0.05 
Again, anything less than 0.1 is going to be slippery, and that's going to be 408 newtons. So the force of friction is 408 newtons. And that's really all they're asking for. I mean, we could extend this and make this a little harder, but that's good enough for now. Unbeknownst to students, every time the school floors are waxed, Mr. Tracy, the principal, likes to slide down the hallway in his socks. Mr. Tracy's weight is 850 newtons, and the coefficient of sliding friction between his socks and the floor is 0.12. What is the force of friction that opposes Mr. Tracy's, you know, moving down the floor? So uh, here we have a little bit of a, just a quick review of the, uh, of the, of the problem. And uh, you'll remember that this is horizontal. So we know what Fn is and Fw, et cetera. And so what we're trying to find is what is the force of friction that opposes Mr. Tracy's motion, uh, motion down the hall, okay? So it's gonna be uh, FF equals mu Fn, and FF is gonna be 102 newtons, 102 newtons. Okay, now, next. Sky is trying to get her 70 kilogram St. Bernard to go out the back door, but the dog refused to walk. If the sliding friction between the dog and the floor is 0 .05, 0 0.5, okay, we've got to, you know, find out, you know, how hard you have to shove it, okay, how, you know, you got to encourage this little puppy, you know, this big little puppy, 142, 157 pounds. So uh, how hard must Sky push in order to move the dog with a constant speed? So there you know, there you have its constant speed. So it's got to equal the friction. So, so if we know the friction, we'll know how hard she has to push it. All right, so the weight is going to be 700 newtons. The... Um, FW equals FN again, and uh, so let's see if we can get the show on the road here. We know that F, we know that F, F equals mu FN. So, so what? So what does that mean? So, it's going to be 0.5 times 700. So FF is 350 newtons. So. You've got to push the 350 newtons because the force of friction and FP have to be the same. So let's see if we can sort of work that out here. Okay, we see obviously that it's going to be 350 newtons is going to be the friction. And then uh, we know that that's going to equal F FP. So let's see how they actually present that to us. Okay, well, we don't, but we know that that's the answer. Okay. We know that that's the answer. That was the last slide. But the answer for that slide will be if the force of friction is going to be 350 newtons, FP also has to be uh, 350 newtons because it's going to be a constant speed. So what I did was I put in a, an extra slide and uh, I showed you how, how FP is actually... 350 newtons as well because of the constant velocity. Now, rather than taking the stairs, Martin gets from the second floor of his house to the first floor by taking, by sliding down the banister that is inclined at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. If Martin has a mass of 45 kilograms and the coefficient of sliding friction between Martin and the banister is 0.2, what is the force of friction impeding Martin's motion down the banister. Here's the weight is obviously going to be mg or uh, 450 newtons. So uh, we need to find the force of friction that's impeding Martin's motion down the banister. And so we have 450 newtons as the as the weight. However, however, we need to find Fn, so Fn is going to be 450 
cosine 30. Uh, so plug in 450 and then cosine 30, and that will tell you Fn. And then the force of friction is simply going to be mu Fn, or simply plug in the values. Uh, 0.2 for mu and Fn will be, wait for it, Fn will be 390 newtons. So that's going to be the value for Fn. So it's going to be about a fifth of that, or about 80, less than 80, 70 something uh, newtons uh, will be the force of friction. Maybe 78. Some value because 0.2 of 400 uh, would be 80. And then uh, there's the value, dragging this out. So see if you can come up with the force of friction before it shows. Seventy-eight. That's the force of friction. That's what I estimated it to be. And you too can learn to estimate properly. I'll be back and you'll never know I was gone. If the banister is made steeper, inclined at a larger angle, will this have any effect on the force of friction? If so, what? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a series of slides with increasing angle and using the calculated Fn determine the force of friction and see if there is some kind of relationship between an increased angle and force of friction. So I'll let the slides run seven seconds. I'm not going to talk much and I'll let let's see if you can actually calculate the values before the slide changes okay and you can always stop the slide so here's 45 degrees and we'll go through the various calculations good luck So as you can see, a reduced Fn is going to give you a reduced FF. The two are, are related. However, uh, so there is a distinct relationship between the increased angle and the reduced Fn. And as a result, even though I don't show the calculation here, the reduced FF. Okay, so... Uh, let's go on to the next slide. Let's let these finish. Two slides left, this one and one more, and we'll continue. Howard the Soda Jerk at B's Diner, someone who made soda from scratch was called a soda jerk. It's not a terrible expression. 
slides a 0.6 kilogram root beer from the end of the counter to a thirsty customer. A force of friction of 1.2 newtons brings the drink to stop right in front of the customer. What is the coefficient of sliding friction between the glass and the counter? And if the glass encounters a sticky patch on the counter, will this head spot have a higher or lower coefficient of friction? So mu equals FF over FN. We know what FN equals because it's going to be 6, 0.6 times 10. Uh, and then we know what FF equals 1.2. And so we're going to plug in to that equation. They'll probably write FF in terms of MG, and they do. So it'll be 1.2 divided by 0.6 quantity 0.6 times 10. So mu will be approximately 0.2. It will be around 0.2, which is not uh, terribly slippery, but if it were very slippery, it would go right past the customer and not stop at all. So uh, you don't want to have too low of a coefficient of friction in that particular circumstance. And the answer is 0.2. The answer is Point two. So um, get used to a situation and stickier means more friction. So if it hits that sticky spot, it'll stop more quickly. Uh, so it'll slow things down. So get used to what, when you see a coefficient of friction in a particular instance, get used to what that is. A common malady in, a malady in runners who run on too hard a surface is shin splints. If a runner's seven kilogram leg hits the pavement so hard that it comes to rest in acceleration of 200 meters per second squared on each hit, how much force must the runner's leg withstand on each step? So it's going to be F equals MA. We know what M is. We know what A is. It's going to be 200. And then what we're going to do is we will make that calculation. So we're going to plug in and so if you see that it's going to be 7 times 200 and that'll be quite large. That'll be quite large and the answer is 1400 newtons. So that's uh, that's pretty significant in terms of you know producing shin splints. It's pretty it gets pretty painful. Barker is unloading 20 kilogram bottles of water from his delivery truck when one of the bottles tips over and slides down the truck ramp that is inclined at an angle of 30 degrees to the ground. What amount of force moves the bottle down the ramp? FW is MG, M is 20, G is 10. Uh, it's going to be sine 30 times FW because we want to know what FP is going to be or the portion of the weight that is parallel with the ramp. So plugging in to the equation FP equals mg sine theta, we get 20 times 10 times sine 30. So put that into your calculator and see if you can come up with the FP. Just a note here, we're not talking about uh, FF as if there is one um, or F net or anything else. It's just simply uh, finding FP. So FP is going to equal 100 Newtons and I'll take a quick break and you'll never know I was gone. In her physics lab Molly puts a one kilogram mass on a two kilogram block of wood. She pulls the combination across another wooden board with a constant speed to determine the coefficient of sliding friction between the two surfaces. If Molly must pull with a force of 6 newtons, what coefficient of sliding friction does she calculate for the wood on wood? Now, if she's pulling at a constant velocity and she's pulling with 6 newtons, therefore the force of friction must be 6 newtons. We know that it's 3 kilogram total weight, uh, total mass, so the weight must be 30 newtons. So it's going to be 6 newtons divided by 30 newtons, which is going to end up to be 0.2.
here are the equations, here are the values, and figure it out for yourself. So it'll be 6 divided by 30, which is 0.2. Now we're going to get to the, to the slippery hippo. Um, and I'll tell you a hippo story when I see you next. A 1,250 kilogram slippery hippo slides down a mud-covered hill inclined at an angle of 18 degrees to the horizontal. If the coefficient of sliding friction between the hippo and the mud is 0 0.09, what force of friction impedes the hippo's motion down the hill? And B, if the hill were steeper, how would this affect the coefficient of sliding friction? So we know that the hippo is going to have a weight of 12,500 newtons, okay? And we really want to know what the coefficient, what the force of friction is going to be, and that's the equation. You're given, uh, you're given 1,250 kilograms, 18 degrees, and uh, 0.09 uh, mu, and the weight is going to be mg. It should be fairly simple, so it'd be 12,500 um, uh, newtons. You're also, you have the equation Fn equals Fw cosine theta. Uh, so what, we'll, what we'll do is we're gathering some of the equations that we need. Uh, we have uh, the frictional force equals mu Fn. So if you take these equations one at a time, it's going to be a very simple problem to do. Now, you could actually construct the equation uh, force of friction equals mu uh, mg cosine theta, or you could do them all one at a time. So there's the equation back again that we started with. So we came full circle. This is uh, called equation derivation, and it's a uh, a little bit more sophisticated way of doing the problem. Here is everything plugged in. So the force of friction would be uh, the sum of 0 0.09 times 12.50 times 10 times cosine 18, which is 1,070 newtons. That would be the friction, the frictional force that the hippo experiences sliding down the incline. So uh, the steeper the angle, the larger the FP, and the smaller the FN, FN and FF are proportional, so the smaller the FF. So just think in terms of if you're putting the, if you're putting it up higher, okay, uh, in other words the incline is greater, the greater the incline, the the larger FP becomes and the smaller FN becomes and FF is dependent upon uh, FN. In the TV show The Adams Family, Uncle Fester found it quite comfortable to sleep on a bed of nails. Though this doesn't sound like the most pleasant way <clears throat> to take a nap, it is not too painful if many nails are placed fairly close together. If Uncle Fester has a mass of 53 kilograms and his body covers 700 nails, each with a surface area of one square millimeter, what is the pressure exerted on his body? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to convert one square millimeter into a, a square meter. So there, there are 1,000 millimeters in a meter square it, so there would be one million square millimeters in a uh, square meter. So if you see this, you square both the numerator and the denominator, it ends up with one, one meter squared divided by 10 to the sixth millimeter squared. So then what you want to do is you want to divide through and that ends up to be one times 10 to the negative sixth uh, meter squared. And there's the math. Now, if you multiply that times 700, you end up with 7 times 10 to the negative fourth. 7 times 1 is 700, so it would be 700 times 10 to the negative sixth, move the decimal over, 7 times 10 to the negative fourth meters squared. So that's the area. Now the, the force is his weight, 
53 times 10 is 530 newtons, so 530 newtons divided by 7 times 10 to the negative fourth meters squared is 7.6 times 10 to the fifth newtons uh, per meter squared. So that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Uh, and remember, that's per square meter. Now, if you only had one nail, uh, if you only had one nail, uh, then that would be uh, quite a bit different. It would be 530 newtons divided by one nail, which would be 1 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared, which would be 5.3 times 10 to the, the eighth newtons per meter squared, and that would be quite significant, quite significant. Length, the 65 kilogram lifeguard slides down a water slide that is inclined at an angle of 35 degrees to the horizontal into the community swimming pool. If the coefficient of friction of the slide is 0 0.05, what is Link's rate of acceleration as he slides down? What is Link's rate of acceleration as he slides down? So, uh, Let's look at a review, just a quick review of the um, math, the different vectors involved in two-dimensional force application. Start by constructing a triangle showing all the forces acting on the lifeguard, then find the normal force acting on Link when he is inclined at an angle to the horizontal. Because the normal force always acts perpendicular to the surface on which the object sits, find this force with the use of trigonometry. Obviously, you're going to be finding them all with the use of trigonometry. So, the, uh, the Fn is going to be equal to cosine theta times Fw, or simply Mg, so that would be 650 newtons times cosine 35 degrees. <clears throat> and that'll be the Fn, which is going to be 65 times 10 times cosine 35, and that will be equal to approximately 532 newtons, 532 newtons. So you can see that by this time in reading uh, in looking at this video, you should be pretty comfortable with the various trigonometric functions, etc., involved in solving these problems. So, this should become rather easy for everybody involved. So, this is uh, fairly uh, become re very routine. Now, use this normal force to find the force of friction. To find the force of friction, and you know that you have 0 0.05 and that's going to be multiplied by 532 and that's going to be the force of friction. That'll be the force of friction. So multiply 0 0.05 times 532. So then plugging into the equation we get uh, FF equals 0 0.005 times 532 which is 27 newtons and what we have to do now is we have to determine what fp is fp is going to be again this should become very very uh, very simple fp is going to be fw sine theta and then so fw is going to be 650 or 65 times 10 times sine Theta, uh, theta is 65, so multiply this out in your calculator and you should get approximately uh, 373 newtons. Now we're going to subtract that, uh, we're going to subtract the, the friction from the FP and uh, because the exercise asks for length acceleration at the bottom of the slide, because friction opposes Link's motion, subtract its effect from FP. The net force acting on Link, therefore, will be, will be uh, 346 newtons.
So now you're going to remember that F equals MA. So those are all the equations and the knowns and unknowns, etc. The original equation F equals MA, where F is going to be 346. We calculated that. Uh, M is going to be 65, and so the answer will be 5.32 meters per second squared. Okay, so that's that problem. The circus is moving on to the next town, and the last animal to board is a stubborn 1,500 kilogram elephant who refuses to budge. Noah pulls the elephant at a constant speed up the 10 degree incline with a force of 10,000 newtons. What is the coefficient of sliding friction between the elephant and the loading platform? Here is everything you need. The mass is 1,500 kilograms, 10 degrees, the net, uh, F net is going to be 10,000 newtons because they're going at a constant speed. And the FW is mg, uh, mu is FF over Fn, and there's the rest of it. Okay, so we'll take, take it one step at a time. We have to make sure that we calculate each one of these. Uh, the first one we want to do is uh, we know we have the F net. And we know that F net equals uh, plus FP plus a negative FF. And there's the uh, free body diagram. So as a result of this diagram, is there anything else that you can figure out in the table itself? So in the table, you have FW equals MG. So FW is going to be is going to be uh, fifteen thousand newtons. Uh, MG will be fifteen thousand newtons. So uh, that's the equation: fifteen hundred kilograms times ten is going to be equal to fifteen thousand newtons. So the answer is fifteen thousand newtons. And we'll put that into the table, FW, 15,000 newtons. And now we want to find uh, FP. And we know that FP equals FW sine theta. So it's going to be 15,000 newtons sine 10 degrees. And that's going to be 2605 newtons. Put that into the table, 2605 newtons for FP, and we're done with that. Now, we know that F net is going to be 10,000, and we know that FP is going to be 2605 newtons, so now we can solve for FF, which is negative 7395 newtons. And we're going to put that into the table, and we are done. We are basically done. Uh, oh, we have to do the uh, mu. So mu is going to be FF over FN, and it's going to be 0.5, 0 0.5. So now we'll put that into the table, and I think that makes us done. Yes, that makes us completely finished. And there we are. That's the final table, all done and nice and neat. So uh, the coefficient of sliding friction is 0.5, and that's really what the answer is. Madison, whose mass is 35 kilograms, climbs the ladder on the side in her backyard and slides to the ground at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. If the coefficient of sliding friction is 0.15, what is Madison's acceleration down the slide? Ignore the initial effects of starting friction. So we're going to do things very quickly. It's going to unravel very very quickly and you should you should know how to do this by now this is the last problem and I'm just gonna let things go here and see if you can get these please put it on pause and see if you can get the answers before they appear so FW FN here comes FP FF now F net And A. And that's it. Watch for any other lectures. I have to do the problems yet, and I have some additional problems. 
for you to consider. Okay, have a nice day.